us who work on these sorts of issues are also still fragmented. We have our own either ideological positions or our own territories and turfs to protect or whatever it is. And certainly in Delhi we see that a lot. Um, you, you just have so I think being able to bring people together is also a major hurdle. One interesting idea has been proposed a few years back and actually which came into the 12th or 13th five year plan. Um, is that even within the current system, there could be ways by which you actually start getting more accountability uh, for sustainability of the government. So, for instance, like we have a controller and auditor general, which at least is able to bring out uh, exposés of what's happening within the government on financial uh, issues. Uh, we have a election commissioner who is independent of government and is able to ensure some level of uh, accountability in the election process. We therefore then also need a, uh, a sustainability commission who can assess and report to the public on whether in fact the government is meeting its needs or its uh, obligations for sustainability. So supposing for instance we do finally reach a global mandate on sustainability, uh, I'm hesitating to call it sustainable development because I think that's a bit of a contradiction in terms but anyway suppose we do reach a global thing on sustainable development and India agrees to it, how do we actually ensure that? One of course is civil society monitoring which is the most important, but can we have an institution like this which is also reporting on and bringing out and exposing where the government is going seriously, uh, seriously wrong. Um, so last, of course, none of this is going to happen on its own. Uh, so obviously I think public mobilization, mass movements, civil society being able to get together, all of this is the most important step. There is no, absolutely no getting away from it. And that's I think something that's a responsibility we, we have to take. But of course there are also, I mean government is not a monolith, there are also really great people within governments and we can keep pushing them, giving them inputs, etc. At least to keep opening up more and more spaces within the system even as we strive to change that system by itself. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, we have some time I think for discussion. Thank you. Um, thank you. That was a really comprehensive presentation and I, because I follow the global process it is interesting to see that a lot of the things that you have said has come up in the global process also, for example, tourism, sustainable tourism, for example, the, you know, the uh, island countries were really talking very much about sustainable tourism, etc. But and many of these issues, infrastructure and technology, etc. have been touched, but not always as comprehensive or the whole framework of the SDGs limits it. It makes it a very minimalist kind of approach and it has to be fitting all, everybody has to apply. And therefore, I think lies our advantage because when we talk about these things nationally, is where our strengths lie. Because for many issues, what you cannot do in a global level, the, glo the objective of the global thing is completely different. It's what global community can do as a whole and where they are working together strengthens that objective. But the national level, for example, governance, mm -hmm. struck me as one which Vijay Prataki was also mentioning, as a very important concern for us. But it absolutely fits very well a national plan of action because you know at the global level when that rules uh, the goal 16 was suggested rule of law governance etc. Uh, many countries said because for example it will also give the USA the power to go into Iraq actually in search of natural resources but they justify it by saying you don't have rule of law governance. But nationally we are very very strong and like we really can fight for a very strong framework of what governance, what effective governance and accountability frameworks could look like. And there I think lies some of the real benefits of your paper and it gets us thinking and when we are going to work on this in the afternoon and tomorrow, it really gives us constructive ways and uh, ideas to kind of you know work with. Uh, so thank you and then now we'll open it up for questions. Uh, raise your hand and identify yourself. Please. Okay, so I see Vijay Pratapji first, uh, show more and then um, uh, Vijay Pratapji and I will take questions from this side. Go back to that side. Uh, is there any on mic or? No.
रिसीव आपने टेलीग्राफिकली रखा आई विश देर वॉज ए स्टडी कैम्प फॉर टू थ्री डेज एंड वेर यू कूड एलेबरेट इज ऑफ योर पॉइंट वी एज पार्ट ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग थीम आई वुड प्रपोज कन्वीनर ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप एज ऑलवेज ऑल दी वर्कशॉप वी डू वी आर ओनली फेक को ऑर्गेनाइजर इट्स रियली अजय झा हु डज द ऑल दी वर्क तो उसके लिए मुबारक Uh, मेरे दो ऑब्जर्वेशन हैं एक तो चैलेंजेस वाला जो था उसमें पब्लिक एपैथी मेरे को थोड़ा प्रॉब्लमेटिक लगता है जब जब कोई रोजमर्रा का सवाल आता है 74 हुआ 87 89 करप्शन लगा लोगों को अभी अन्ना के समय लगा तो बड़े पैमाने पे लोग आते हैं या कैलेमिटीज होती हैं या 84 आपको याद होगा तब आप दिल्ली में थे आपके तमाम आसपास के लोग भी किस तरह से जब एंटी सिख कांग्रेस ने दंगा कराया तो कैसे नौजवान निकल आए थे तो चाहे एपैथी हो चाहे कैलेमिटी हो चाहे कोई और तरह की ट्रेजेडी हो उसमें लोग आते हैं या कोई ऐसा सवाल हो जो उनकी जबान में और उनको रोजमर्रा के सवालों पर चौहत्तर के आंदोलन का मैंने आपको उदाहरण दिया आसाम आंदोलन एक दूसरा उदाहरण है अलग ढंग का तो इसलिए पब्लिक एपैथी को डीकंस्ट्रक्ट करना चाहिए आ, ये और वो ना कहा जाए और उसके कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी का कोई और पॉइंट कहा जाए जैसे जो हमारा ब्लिंकर्स और कंडीशन का आपने बहुत पासिंग में कहा वो मुझे मेजर चैलेंज लगता है और कंडीशनिंग देर ए ग्लोबल कंसेंसस इन द मिडिल क्लास अबाउट डिजायरेबिलिटी एंड फिजिबिलिटी ऑफ चेंजिंग अमेरिकन कंज्यूमर पैराडाइज एंड दैट इज वॉट यू आर रेफरिंग टू इन दासिंग बट आई हैव अदर कंडीशनिंग इन माइंड द कास्ट कंडीशनिंग हमारे यहाँ द बेस्ट ऑफ द किसान लीडर्स जो एंटी कास्ट मूवमेंट्स लाए हैं वो भी जब किसानी की बात करते हैं तो किसानी का आर्टिजन से क्या इंटेग्रल संबंध है किसानी का लिविंग कम्युनिटी से क्या इंटेग्रल संबंध है इनलैंड फिशिंग से क्या इंटेग्रल संबंध है किसानी में आदिवासी किसान और लैंडलेस वर्कर जो एग्रीकल्चर उनके खेत चलाता है उसके क्या क्या नॉलेज सिस्टम है जिस पे रूरल इकोनॉमी और खुद प्रेजेंट बेस्ड है जैसे मिड वाइफ का है जैसे बोन सेटर का है जैसे हर्बल प्रैक्टिशनर का है ये सब गांव की इकोनॉमी के इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्से हैं एग्रीकल्चर साइंस ही हमारी जो इंडिजिनस प्रैक्टिसेस हैं आदिवासियों की फॉरेस्ट के बारे में जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग है इसके बारे में कास्ट और कम्युनिटी का इतना स्टील फ्रेम सेपरेशन है बिकॉज ऑफ द कास्ट कंडीशनिंग दैट वी डोंट इवन रियलाइज द सस्टेनेबल नॉलेज सिस्टम्स विच आर देयर विच आर बींग प्रैक्टिस एंड विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूट ए मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द सस्टेनेबल इकोनॉमी इवन टूडे इन इंडिया एंड कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया वी डोंट इवन कैलकुलेट दैट सो दैट कंडीशनिंग पार्ट शुड बी देयर तो ये एक ऑब्जर्वेशन चैलेंजेस में है दूसरा जो ऐड करना चाहिए कास्ट के अलावा जो जिंगोइस्टिक नेशनलिज्म आपने पासिंग में शुरू में कहा और ये इम्पोर्टेंट है कि पासिंग में इसलिए नेगेटिव क्रिटिसिज्म नहीं समय के कारण पासिंग में था हम लोग जो बाहर जमीन चीन और भारत कॉम्पीट कर रहे हैं कि कैसे डिस्ट्रॉय करके और कॉलोनाइज किया जाए तो उसमें नेशनलिज्म बहुत आड़े आता है क्योंकि इकोनॉमी की सब कैलकुलेशन नेशनल बाउंड्रीज में होती हैं इस वजह से अनसस्टेनेबल प्रैक्टिसेस हम कैसे कर रहे हैं जिस तरह से ग्लोबल पावर्स ने इंपीरियलिस्ट पावर्स ने डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज को एनडीसी और नॉन एनडीसी में डिवाइड किया और अब तमाम एनडीसी की सस्टेनेबल इकोनॉमी को डिस्ट्रॉय करके ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी में एज सबसर्वियंट सबसिस्टेंस इकोनॉमी के तौर पर नॉट इवन सबसिस्टेंस इकोनॉमी के तौर पे इंटेग्रेट कर लिया ऑलरेडी उसी तरह से हम लोग अपने नेबर्स के साथ रिश्ता रखना चाहते हैं चाइना पूरे एशिया में और पूरे अफ्रीका में वही रिश्ता बनाना चाहता है और हम जो इस तरह के इमर्जिंग इकोनॉमी ब्रिक्स जो है वो इसका एग्जांपल है कि हम सब लोग मिलके सेकंड रंग ऑफ इम्पेरियलिज्म जो है और उसके खिलाफ लड़ाई सस्टेनेबल ग्लोबल परस्पेक्टिव ऑन सस्टेनेबल में जरूरी है और वो नेशनलिज्म का आई एम नॉट आस्किंग ऑल ऑफ अस टू बिकम अनपेट्रोटिक और अनरूटिक बट दिस फॉर्म ऑफ 
linguistic nationalism where growth and bazaar making india nationalism ka jab equation ho jayega to ye bahut destructive hoga na keval third world jahan hum lootenge aur colonize karenge balki hamare liye bhi destructive hoga to ye do points caste uh, system and hierarchy ka system aur dusra jingoistic nationalism uh, which is based on market fundamentalism I just wanted to ask two quick questions, Ashish. Uh, one is uh, when you talked about the sustainable consumption level. There have been efforts earlier in uh, determining sustainable consumption level in some kind of capsule form. One example being the GDR framework, the greenhouse development drive framework. Uh, uh, admittedly, I have not uh, read your book. If you send the uh, PDF, I'll read it. So I don't know. And my question is, what kind of Uh, approach you should. I'm not saying what framework. What kind of approaches should be there, considering that there were earlier different frameworks for defining a sustainable consumption level based on uh, purchase power parity, etc., etc. So, is there something that you are proposing very different from that, or why that has not taken up? One. Second thing about when you said that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, models of alternative sustainable development. In fact. i think uh, some of us here in the even in this room are involved in trying to develop some of this but one thing that i find a little problematic is we always assume that if we if we study this share this then it will automatically be replicated the things that we forget is that in any developing any alternative model there is an enormous amount of knowledge monitoring participation that goes on which without which just expecting that thing to be shared and to be replicated is taking out all those extra inputs and then expecting that this thing will automatically go on like a same division so what is your opinion on that because it's not that many of these have not been shared of course you said not shared enough probably it should be so there is nothing uh, it's a very subjective one shared not shared enough is a subjective one but we know that lot of these alternatives which are sustainable to some extent sustainability also subjective one exactly. so that has been shared many of the people who discuss this who share this have also shared in many other fora in spite of that this has not really grown what has grown is what all of us are referring to is the mainstream economic growth oriented development so what do you think is the uh, impediment in growing this kind of sustainable development model or sustainability models and as i pointed out that we always assume that just showing that just sharing that will help will uh, replicate that without taking into account the additional inputs ha uh, thank you this has been a, a very interesting discussion um if i can just add uh, on the last point which is to say that uh, i mean i think we need both i think we need i, I think if we sorry i'm samir from action aid um so uh, You know, I think you're quite right um, to point out that, that economic thinking on the macroeconomics point. You're quite right to point out that economic thinking has been fairly narrow, even on the left side of the spectrum. If I read, um, you know, Chandru uh, Chandrasekhar from JNU, and I read Paul Krugman from the New York Times, I don't see a whole lot of difference necessarily. There's there differences, but you have to look for it. You have to know what you're looking for, right? So I think that's absolutely correct that you're pointing that out. The one thing that I would say is that we need both. At the same time that we need to articulate. models of economics that put human beings and the and the planet first we also need to acknowledge that one the roots of neoliberal system whatever we call that so the, the keynesian system keynesian economic systems that both krugman and uh, professor chandra shaker would would both sort of identify in different ways with or, or have a sort of certain strong relation to the with is is coming back in force is quite strong the predictions that it has made have been quite borne out by recent history and so on So I think we have to ask the question okay this certain kind of unregulated free market capitalism has definitely failed no one is going to deny that the question becomes how can we in the short term integrate a model a keynesian integrate some of these principles into a keynesian model while at the same time we for the longer term try and propose and develop alternative models so I hope that you would uh, I would also put myself in line to receive the the copy left book uh, please um but uh, but i think this is also something for your for your consideration as well
I'll just answer the summaries and then we get back to that and lose. Uh, I'm also getting old now, so memory loss is there. Um, yeah, Vijay Ji, I've made the donor points. I have a little bit of कुछ तो मेरी भी समझ की कमी है लेकिन कुछ थोड़ा जल्दी जल्दी से करना पड़ा इसके इस वजह से भी है पब्लिक एक्टर थी आप बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं कि खाली उतना रखने से जो जिस तरह का लोगों ने आंदोलन ने बातें उठाई हैं या क्राइसिस के टाइम पे लोग जो घर के आए हैं दैट इज बीइंग निगलेक्टेड इफ आई सिंपली से बैक पब्लिक एक्टर यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट मेरा एक तो पॉइंट वो जो आपने कहा वो ये कंडीशनिंग और ड्रेन वॉशिंग का कहा वो और वो ना केवल वो कास्ट का तो है बिल्कुल है कास्ट हो या ट्राइब नॉन ट्राइब हो या मतलब अलग या फिर इवन जेंडर हो ये सब तो कंडीशनिंग है ही और वो बहुत पहले से चलती आ रही है तो बदलने भी में भी टाइम लगेगा किस तरह के आंदोलन किस तरह के सामाजिक परिवर्तन हम ला सकते हैं ला रहे हैं लाना चाहिए जिससे वो चीज़ें बदले दैट इज़ अ वेरी बिग क्वेश्चन उसमें मेरा एक तो ये भी आता है जैसे आपने भी शायद थोड़ा जिम किया कि आंदोलन भी जब होते हैं और आंदोलन अगर मान लीजिए किसी के खिलाफ है और अगर वो सक्सीड हो भी जाते हैं सफल हो भी जाते हैं उसके बाद अपने आप जो वो सिस्टम लाते हैं दैट फॉलोज मॉडल इज द सेम मॉडल सो देर इज ऑब्वियसली अ प्रॉब्लम देर बट दी अदर थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू से ऑल्सो विजय जी वॉज दैट इन टाइम्स ऑफ क्राइसिस पीपल डू कम अप एंड सर्ट इन इंडिया The problem is what about times of non-crisis? When suppose there is a period of relative, I don't know, stability or lack of crisis of certain. उस समय क्या हम proactively as public, adequately हम लोग क्या उस तरह का हम लोग अपने आप को mobilize करते हैं कि we now need, we have this period of stability. This is a good opportunity for us to move into a different system. The non-crisis proactive. Uh, रिस्पॉन्स में मुझे लगता है पब्लिक है एंड आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ अस आई एम नॉट पब्लिक आई एम नॉट ब्लेमिंग समबडी एल्स ना अपने हम अपना अपने आप की बात कर रहे हैं सो आई थिंक दैट्स वन थिंग आई मेंट टू से आई एम सॉरी थोड़ा जल्दी में वो ठीक से मैं समझा नहीं पाया नेशनलिज्म का भी बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा आई टोटली एग्री इन फैक्ट आई वुड एक्चुअली गो एज फार टू से कि नेशन स्टेट का जो नोशन है उसी को हमको चैलेंज कर लीजिए एक पॉइंट उसमें था जिसपे मैंने मैं ज़्यादा जिक्र नहीं कर पाया कि जो हम प्लानिंग प्रोसेस की बात करते हैं माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स पॉलिटिक्स वगैरह डेमोक्रेसी की उसमें भी इफ़ वी एक्चुअली स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट डिसीजन मेकिंग एट द लेवल्स ऑफ इकोलॉजिकल एंड कल्चरल यूनिट्स एंड नॉट करंटली डिफाइंड पोलिटिकल यूनिट्स तो फिर नेशन स्टेट बाउंड्रीज को भी हमको चैलेंज करना पड़ेगा मुझे कोई भी रैशनल रीजन नहीं लगता है कि सुंदरबंस जो दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा मैनग्रोव इको सिस्टम है जिसमें फिशिंग कम्युनिटीज हैं टाइगर है वगैरह है उसके बीच में एक पॉलिटिकल बाउंड्री डाल दी है एब्सोल्युटली नो रैशनल रीजन आई थिंक ऑफ बट इट्स हैपेंड हिस्टोरिकली मुझे लगता है कि इंक्रीजिंगली आई मीन दिस इज अ वेरी कंट्रोवर्शियल बिकॉज़ पीपल विल स्टार्ट सेइंग कि यू डोंट वांट इंडिया बाउंड्रीज टू रिमेन एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा पर मुझे लग रहा है कि पूरे पूरा मैं चाहे इधर ले लें चाहे चाइना ले लें चाहे पाकिस्तान ले लें चाहे कोई भी ले लेते हैं आई थिंक वी नीड टू एक्चुअली स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट दिस एस इकोलॉजिकल एंड कल्चरल लैंडस्केप्स टू बी डिसाइडेड ऑन एंड गवर्न एंड मैनेज्ड इन वेरी डिफरेंट वेज चैलेंजिंग नेशन से तो आई वुड गो यू दैट फॉर एंड आई एम श्योर यू वुड बी पर अगेन बिकॉज़ ऑफ लैक ऑफ टाइम आई डिड एक्चुअली गो इन टू दिस बट नेशनलिस्टिक जिंगोइज्म इज इज अ टोटली सीरियस प्रॉब्लम इट्स ओके वी बी इन क्रिकेट But definitely not in the kind of examples that you gave. हो सकता है क्रिकेट में हम लोग फिर भी कहें कि ठीक है अपनी टीम को जीतना चाहिए. लेकिन that's a that's a joke. But okay, हाँ that's a joke मेरे का ऐसा. पर बाकी मतलब जिस तरह की चीजों में हम लोग उसको करते हैं, especially colonizing other other peoples now. And actually that's also a point I wanted to raise about the global discussions. I think one of the biggest problems in all the documents that have come out so far is that they are still very heavily nation state centered obviously because the un system is nation state centered lekin global governance ko kaise hum people centered bana sakte hain with the peoples of the world self defined peoples of the world chahe wo indigenous peoples ho ya dusri tarah ki culturally defined communities ho uh, 
उनको कैसे सेंटर स्टेज ला सकते हैं ग्लोबल गवर्नेंस ने वो तो अभी तक इस पूरे एमडीजीज एसडीजीज के डिबेट में शायद नहीं है एंड इट वांट कम बिकॉज़ ऑब्वियसली द यूएन सिस्टम विल नॉट वांट टू ब्रिंग इट अप बट एज सिविल सोसाइटी आई थिंक वी शुड बी ब्रिंगिंग दैट अप शामिल सस्टेनेबल कंजम्पशन है जो जो पहले जो आई थिंक पीडीआरस एंड दोस काइंड्स ऑफ एग्जांपल्स दैट वर देयर वन इज देयर बिटवीन कंट्रीज Within the country का तो कुछ खास उतना वो था नहीं। तो तो ETS network is not within country. It's on a consumption level connected with income. So how? Okay, you need to explain that more to me. I, I wasn't following that too much. But my uh, the way uh, I've approached it, this is actually an article which I'll send you. Uh, approached it is to say that we need to look at it in terms of the material resources and energy resources that people are consuming so it actually has very little to do with money but of course also has to do with money because one of the means of doing this would be for instance to limit salaries uh, no country in the world as far as i know has been successful in saying this is a cap on salaries there was a referendum in switzerland a few months back asking for a cap in salaries including for the private sector that referendum uh, was defeated but the fact that at least it went to a refer referendum is a good sign it's a sign of hope at least Hundred thousand people in Switzerland are asking the right question, um, but a cap in salaries. But I think that's a very small part of. Uh, it's important, but a small part of it. To me, actually, it's about beginning the cultural change within ourselves. I mean, you can have laws and things like that. But beginning the cultural change within ourselves to actually start saying, start looking at each other with criticism when we are over consuming. Uh, And this was the case. I remember when I was in school, uh, the first boy who actually started coming to school in a car, everybody else was looking at him and saying you're mad about it, and looking negatively at him. Today, if a school boy goes on a cycle, he's looked at negatively. I mean, the whole thing has changed. But because it's, I mean, the fact that it's changed in these 20, 30 years so dramatically means it could also change back dramatically, which is about creating the cultural. Uh, changes. It's actually, you know, creating the awareness. Most people are not even aware of the impacts of their consumption pattern. So one of the exercises I do in school is we open up, we uh, empty out the garbage bin at the end of the day, and I do an exercise with the kids saying, okay, let's look at every piece of garbage that you've thrown into this garbage bin. Where does it come from? Where is going to end up? What is the impact where it's come from on people and on nature? What is going to be the impact where it ends up? Whether it's in the river or the sea or whatever. And it's amazing the kind of transformation that takes place in kids because they have never been told. Most of us in this room, every one of us in this room, actually is not fully aware of the impacts of our consumption. So I think, Shamia, it's really about trying to bring in that kind of awareness. It's about bringing in the cultural uh, changes. It's about bringing in legal systems which actually start imposing penalties and fines. It's about building in uh, taxation systems. Which very severely tax luxury consumption, if not stop it altogether. It's about uh, regulating the advertising industry, which today tells us that I can only be uh, happy if I have a 45-inch television. Uh, that's the ad I put up the Reliance ad, um, and so on. So it's a whole bunch of these things which will have to go with it. It can't be any single measure that will make this uh, happen. Um, why are sustainability initiatives not being uh, not spreading? Actually, I think they are. Frankly, I mean they're not spreading nearly as fast as they sh they sh we would like them to, and they're still not uh, big enough or have a political mass enough to challenge the mainstream system. But they are changing. In 30 years, I've seen a far greater spread of things like say uh, shifting back from chemical to organic farming uh, and influencing state policies uh, for that. Then was the case earlier. Uh, the same with many, many, many other things. I think they're spreading, but they're still in a economic and political environment in which every step is a struggle. You know, uh, organic farming could have been far greater if it weren't for the fact that it's competing against a uh, hundred thousand crore rupee subsidy on chemical fertilizers. That's one example. There are many others. So. Uh, I think uh, uh, that the kind of forces that we're up against are limiting the spread of the sustainability initiatives. But the second point I think which you made on that, I, I totally agree. That I think the kind of sharing that's happened is not deep enough, if that's what you're saying. 
it's not simply about writing an art, you know, my going to Timbuktu Collective and writing an article somewhere and then it will automatically happen in a hundred other places. Obviously not. It has to be a much deeper sharing of how did they overcome the hurdles that the mainstream system was putting to them. What is it that succeeded? What is it that failed? You know, how did they learn from the failures? How did they learn from the failures? Ustaya ka jo gehrai se samaj jo hangi chahiye, wo shayad abhi kam ho raha hai. So even our documentation that is there, I think is limited. It's not deep enough and because of that. So one thing that we're starting this year onwards, and I would welcome anybody to participate in this is uh, what we call the Vikalp Sangam, uh, where uh, at a regional scale um, for say you know, local areas, uh, we would like to start a process of providing platforms in which people come together, people who are doing these sustainability or equity or justice initiatives to come together and to learn across sectors. I think that's the other thing that doesn't happen. The sustainable agriculture folks will get together, the gender justice folks will get together, the you know the conservation folks will get together. For learning across sectors, just when we can challenge constructively challenge each other. Yes, you have done conservation very well, but the women are not still part of your decision making process. Here we have done the women's department, maybe we can give you a few inputs. But you have done fantastic forest conservation work and we have not done it, you can tell us how to do it. That cross sectoral learning I think is still very very incomplete and so the Vikalp Sangam idea is to actually try and bring people all these different sectors together and try and learn from each other. October is the first one in Nagar Pradesh, but we will it will be moving around country. Please get in touch with me if you would like to be interested. Samir, sorry, last one Samir was there. Sorry, sorry, my responses are as long as my presentation. Uh, yeah, the neoliberal system or whatever you want to call it is is definitely making a comeback. Uh, I mean, whether you call it neoliberal or capitalist or state dominated or whatever, this has enormous uh, resilience built into it. It's a what's somebody called a perverse resilience. Uh, it's not going to bow down and run away or drop dead in such a short time, despite 2008 economic crisis, despite whatever crisis is going through. So now it's reinventing itself in form of green economy green growth, uh, sustainable development, uh, we don't have to go into these in detail, but all of these to my mind are dangerous diversions, where the current mainstream economy and polity is trying to retain itself by showing that it is relevant to the concerns of environment and equity and so on. Inclusive growth, our private plan, the government is talking about inclusive growth. These are all catchphrases that they've got and of course they are doing, they are tinkering around here and there to try and make themselves look greener and redder or whatever. Uh, so it's coming back, but I think if we are able to see through these disguises and continue to challenge the system, I think the system actually is increasingly shaping because of its own fundamentals but also because there is now much, 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 much more dissatisfaction and resistance and push and civil society uh, protests and, and showing alternatives. So I think the system is shaky and I think we just need to keep pushing at the at the yeah, for the roots to uproot it altogether. But until then it is going to keep coming back and it's going to come, keep coming back in new forms. Many of us as NGOs will get bought into it. Lots of my friends who unfortunately got bought into it, now they get funded, big time funding for green economy, etc. etc. So we have to fight that. Okay, we'll take some questions from this side and we'll come back to you. You at the back and we have three questions you are writing, right? So we'll start from you at the back. My name is Sandhya Jain, I am a colleague for the Pioneer. And, uh, I've been doing some thinking of my own. I'm not really a developmental activist or anything. But I wanted to ask one question because you had said earlier that we should look at our own country. I liked uh, Dr. Buthari's point about uh, the colonization of Africa by Indian companies. It has concerned me. I totally agree with this point on Sundar Bans. The rest we let go. But my specific query to you, sir, was in the context of now